Enduring punk rockers Green Day recently sat down with Andrew Ginsberg to chat about their career that's been going, wait for it, 25 years. Sex, drugs and rock and roll, part and parcel with being rock stars. Since their 1994 breakthrough, Dookie, which sold 16 million copies and won them their first Grammy, Green Day's popularity and musical growth have continued, especially in the last decade. With their past two discs, each winning a Grammy for Best Rock Album, a total of five from 19 nominations, and American Idiot even inspiring a Broadway musical. So you'd think after selling 65 million records, the lads would be happy to rest on their laurels, but they've just announced not one, but three new records. Una, dos, or one, two, and three. Well, there was no intention of making it like three albums or anything like that. It just started off, it's just a handful of songs, and then suddenly we realized that this should be big, but we didn't really know how yet. It was more about having fun and sense of humor and also get into the depth of, 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 of songwriting. Uno is Green Day's ninth album since forming back in 1987. The fact they've continued to get more popular as the years go on is a testament to their talent. Maybe the secret to our longevity is it's because we believe in making albums and making eventful albums. It's just more about creating chaos, and that's what we've always been good at. You know, I mean, it's like we're Green Day. We can't help but go epic. We're just, it's impossible. It's like once we try to, it's like, let's tone it down. It's like, it just, it's just never going to happen. The mid noughties saw the guys team with U2 to raise money for Hurricane Katrina victims and get political with the 2004 release of American Idiot, a thinly veiled swipe at the Bush administration. We never intended to really be a political band when we first started, although we were kind of raised around it and, and you know, about being in the Berkeley punk scene and things like that comes out the same way a, a good love song would come out, you know, as long as it's like connected to the heart and the head, and that's all that really matters. What's it like when you're on stage and you deliver that chorus to them and they sing it back to you and there's that energy that happens between you and them? I think it's the, the, the closest thing to, to God that you could possibly come to or wh whatever it is. It definitely uh, gets your adrenaline pumping and it makes you feel good, like, that your music can transcend oceans and, you know, go through satellites and reach people through computers or whatever. Not a whole lot of jobs in this world where you get a, uh, you know, get to have a live, intimate connection with a lot of people, you know, like that. And I think it's, it's a pretty special thing. A lot of marriages don't last as long as you guys have lasted. How do you manage to keep it together? I have no idea. I, you know, we just keep playing and... Um, you just keep the fights clean and extra sturdy. Yeah, there you go. That's the key to longevity in a band? Yeah, to a marriage, too. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> For more of Andrew's interviews, catch the Hot Hits live from LA each Sunday, OVO, from 2pm across the Austereo Network. We'll be right back with the Metro Whip. Don't go anywhere.